Thank you very much for coming and doing a podcast with me. I'm a um, big fan of yours, and I really, really have been thinking about interviewing you for my podcast for many reasons. And I think if you could just talk about what you're doing now, and then we can sort of fill in the life experience, but tell, tell me what's going on in your life right now. Well, um, first, Norma, thank you for having me. Um, it's a real honor. Um, uh, you're, um, you're an idol, a touchstone uh, for, for me, and um, have uh, always been uh, someone who's uh, pushed me, so I, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for that. Um, Hmm, what have I been doing? Um, mm. I, you know, um, when you're a producer, you can work on a number of projects at the same time, and um, some projects take a really long time to get done, and every day you kind of go in and say, okay, how do I get this project made? What do I do for this? What do I do for that? And um, it just seems like within the past uh, year, everything came together, so... Um, I'm finally, after six years, a uh, documentary I did uh, with uh, Rashida Jones and Al Hicks on Quincy Jones. Mm. Uh, came out a year ago uh, in theaters and on Netflix. And that's just been um, a gift to have worked on it. Mm. Uh, Quincy has been uh, a longtime uh, mentor and mm. supporter and to be able to... Uh, be able to tell his story yeah. to a whole generation has been um, just inspiring. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another project I'd been working on with Ava DuVernay for a while about um, the Central Park Five called When They See Us. Uh, Amazing. Uh, um, yeah. uh, was on, um, uh, came on Netflix uh, in uh, late June, and we were nominated for... 16 Emmys, um, oh. and uh, we won two, mm -hmm. and we got to give the men, the exonerated five, a moment that mm -hmm. was um, a, a moment mm -hmm. and to kind of re-examine what happened to them and re-examine what, what's happened in our, our culture, yeah. our culture, mm -hmm. our you know, our criminal injustice mm -hmm. system. And then another movie that I've worked on for, <laughs> um, oh, star it started like 2009, oh, trying to get this made and bring Scorsese and De Niro and Pacino and Pesci back together. Um, that just took, uh, that, that's almost uh, a movie unto itself yeah, with just sure. how, how that went. And we just opened the New York Film Festival and uh, we were closing night of the London Film Festival. It will be in theaters November 1st. Oh, wow. And uh, so it will play in theaters for a month and then it will go um, on uh, the Netflix platform uh, globally uh, as well as still stay in yeah. movie theaters for um, you know, many months to come. Yeah, it, it was just so great to see. And I'm sure you worked very hard at making sure that all of these big personalities got together and, and performed at their peak. I mean, they were all stellar. And it was so great to see. And for me, it was like, this is a chance that we're not going to see again. This is, this is a moment that will not happen again and that having that film is the best way to sort of put the party together at like one last time. Um, how did that, how did you, well, like? I, I don't, I, so going back, I, I don't think that uh, anyone looked at this as this is, the last of any of anything, but it how do was, you top it, this? Well, I mean, first, first and foremost, if you're gonna have Scorsese and De Niro come back, they hadn't worked together since '95, since Casino. Wow. 
So in looking for something, and if they're going back into telling a story about this kind of life, mm. how do they explore it differently? Yeah. What is it that is that has a sense of that that history yeah. uh, to tell the story of of power and family? What is it that is going to be unique and special for mm. them to go back in and and, and not repeat themselves mm. and. Um, certainly, when you look at something with the perspective of age, it gives you a different, you know, you have a different type of rhythm, you tell a different kind of story. But this was something that um, we originally were doing, we're, we were about to do another movie called The Winter of Frankie Machine, which was also about an okay. older hitman, but it was in California. It was. Um, it was f fictional, uh, I mean, inspired by some true events. And um, Bob read this book called I Hear You Paint Houses by Charlie Brandt and had re really read it as research uh, for the Winter of Frankie Machine. And then as he and Marty kept talking and researching for this, for Winter of Frankie Machine, they finally realized, you know what, we should do I Hear You Paint really? Houses. And so that, that morphed. We brought Steve Zalian in, and um, he's an extraordinary uh, writer. Uh, he did The Night Of. He wrote Schindler's List. Mm. I mean, just has amazing, a, yeah. uh, he did Awakenings. He's just got a, you know, an mm. amazing body of work. He came in and um, did uh, the draft of I Hear You mm. Paint Houses, and um, that was delivered by 2009 and then you know everybody had other projects they were working on marty needed to it was going to do departed and wolf of wall street and you know we just kept going oh in God. these different um uh. these different iterations and i think it was around 2014 before marty went off to do silence um bob and i decided to do a reading and i honestly believed that this was all we were ever going to have of I Hear You Paint Houses was this reading. And we, we taped it. And uh, you know, I, have, I have this reading. And uh, it was after that that they all said, no, let's really try to get it mm. done. It's great. I mean, I, I just think it, it, it's so important to, to see this group together, all of the heroes for all of these films. and that have, each of them have huge uh, bodies of work that are just uh, unbelievable, to have them all come together with this director and all of the people, the writing, everything, just really showed in, in the product. And I think having this as the capper on that is just a, a, a blessing for everyone who loves this. This is the kind of movie you watch a hundred times. It's like, it's not a godfather, but it's a different kind of addictive movie that you have to keep seeing and seeing. Because there's so many, like, I can see people quoting lines from mm -hmm. it. I mean, it's like riddled with stuff, right? Yeah. I just saw all of this stuff that's going to start generating this other culture that comes from it. And it's really great to have that. One of the things um, I think about when I, I think of you um, is this powerful, incredibly powerful woman with this inner strength that you would never know looking at you or even hearing your voice. It's so gentle and but there's this in steel. You're like you can you can do anything. Like you're the, the power is is formidable. And I heard somebody who knew you when you were working for them many years ago talking about this long legged, lanky girl coming in, flitting around but man, she was strong. She, she knew what she was doing. And, and I thought, how interesting that at the very beginnings when you were working, 
people saw that even though your lanky sort of whatever you were wearing and however your hair was was sort of a present thing and and it's still the that power is there and your sort of gentleness is still on the outside and you deal with all of these big personalities what prepared you in your childhood what what was the preparation to create this person who who can sort of get all of this going um you know it's um I'm humbled in hearing what you just said about me. I guess I never, um, you know, I never have felt my own strength until, or my own Power. powers until, um, you know, until very, until very recently, and I mean just over the past couple of years of, of feeling that way. I think I always felt that, um, you know, I wasn't in the fast lane, I was in the breakdown lane, <laughs> and that it was um, having, you know, you know, working on movies, building what um, Bob De Niro and I were able to do with the Tribeca Film Center, but never, um, you know, actually, when you think about what we were describing in 1990, we were describing an open space and a shared economy for people to come and work. We were describing WeWork. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, uh, we should have maybe stayed with that plan. But anyway, you, you know, I wanted to make movies. I wanted to tell stories. I wanted to figure out what the change you can create in the world by the stories that you can tell whether they were comedies or dramas. And, and I've, I've always loved stories. So I never viewed it as there was some power that I had, because I also had, you know, I have these wonderful daughters. One just turned 21 mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yesterday, and the other is, uh, will be 25. And, you know, there's nothing like uh, two girls to turn around and you, know, you can be feeling so great and you're on top of the world and they look at you and say, no, boy, that's not happening. Right. Um, you know, I also, I also didn't come when you said hi to you. I also came from uh, as, on one hand, as supportive as my parents were. I came from a place where if I asked my father something, he would say no first and it was you know, kind of a narcissistic mother in there. And mm -hmm. I think that all I wanted to do was get out of the house, which I mm -hmm. did. And, um, you know, I moved to New York to go to NYU. I was 17, about to be 18. And I wanted to work and to make my own money and to not be dependent on, on them. Yeah. And, um, that was that was that was important. That sense mm -hmm. of not having somebody say no. Say no. Yeah. But you know, that said, I'm in a business that people say, <laughs> say no, no to you more time, time more right. than they say yes. So. Well, you know how to you know how to deal with no. I think you know that your parents are your motivation to to do. I mean, the same with me. That that. that is really what forms your drive and your motivation. So I think any childhood of any description that creates somebody who understands what their skill set is as a result of that is a great is a great thing. I mean, at the time you don't think it's no, so great, but but look what you can do. You can accept no. You can do that. You said something interesting until the last few years, you haven't understood your power. So one of the reasons I wanted you to come is because I know that. And for every, I, I have decided at 74 to talk openly and inspire women to understand that you can age with power, that there is power in aging. 
It is not a horrible thing. The transition through your 50s and through menopause and through hormones and people lose jobs, separate from their relationships, all of these things happen. It is inevitable. It's what happens. It's the transition to the next part of your life, which I find the most powerful time of my life. And you just touched on the last couple of years being where you're feeling your power. So how, how did that come about? How did you realize that? What was that moment where you said, all right, I'm, I get who I am. I get what my power is. Uh, I think it becomes a, a series of things. I, I, you know, I feel like professionally having worked on some projects that had taken me that I discussed earlier had taken me so many years to, um, to make finally coming to fruition and being pleased with how they mm. have been received in the world. Plus one of my lifelong dreams to, was also to bring Marty Scorsese was the one who introduced me to De Niro and to be able to do something with them together. Oh, wow. So that was, you know, also something I feel, you know, an enormous sense of pride in. I think that on some of the other businesses that we do, it, it got to a point that um, I had to believe in myself versus other people around me who I thought always had all the answers. And it was the, it was the courage and to a certain extent also the, the stamina to say, I, I disagree. Mm -hmm. I um, might have thought that, you know, this group knew absolutely everything, but it wasn't going to work anymore. And it wasn't, um, and to, you know, I was way out over my skis at one point and just, you know, really mm -hmm. questioning um, a lot of things. But you, you get to a point if you can't, you know, and I always felt this about my work. If you can't trust your own instincts, yeah. who do you trust? Okay, and that's in mm -hmm. creative arts. It's what you do. If you can't trust your own instincts, mm -hmm. what do you, who do you trust? And I realized that it was, um, it was that way on another side of my business. I also think that, too, I went through uh, a number of different issues with both of my daughters. And it was with all these various professionals around. At the end of the day, these are like my kids. I knew mm. what had to be, I knew what yeah. had to do, even if it was, you know, arguing with my ex and professionals and, you know, whatever it was. And seeing them blossom mm. and seeing how strong they are and <laughs> knock on whatever. Mm. Um, and uh, you too. I, I, I love the way you look. I love, I just, you look so good. You exude this power. You really do. I've, I've seen your transformation of, obviously, you, you've gone through your process, your transition, and really gave yourself the opportunity to feel the pain of it, to feel, which we all do. I remember my process, exhausting. I never thought I'd get through it. It was so depressing. Is there going to be a tomorrow? Will I ever do anything again? But you've gone, I mean, your career is so spectacular. And to see how, where you are now, and there's no question that tomorrow even has more. I mean, I see you, and I see, like, you're on a, uh, on a path that, is going to be great for everybody to have as your, you know, your gift to all of us. I really, um, I wanted 
you to come here because I want women to see what power looks like when you understand that it's about you and what you give out that draws this to you. And you have to go through this process. It's one of the phases in a woman's life. Well, I think it's also um, what, I, what I ended up realizing is that um, I was less alone by myself right. than I was with, um, with somebody. And that I would, I'm very happy, you know, I'm, you know, I, I'm insatiably curious about things and how we can create new things and what we can do. Mm -hmm. I, I get exhilarated by that process. Uh, and that anyone that was trying to bring me down from that, um, I realized I what well, that didn't have a place mm. in my yeah. that didn't have a place in my my life. Look, the other thing too is I lost one of my I lost one of my closest girlfriends mm. a number of years ago, and you kind of say to yourself, okay, how much time do we really yeah. have to really do what we want and to make that difference mm -hmm. and. If you don't do it now, when are you going to do it? Um, and I think that gives you a, a strength and, yeah. a, and, and a purpose. And, um, you know, it just is, um, I, I, I guess I haven't owned, I, I've, I throughout my career have owned the word ambition, when ambition was always considered a dirty word yeah. for women. Mm. In listening to you here and talking about it, I haven't owned the word power because I just feel I I, I don't. You're only I, I, I question that word. Mm. You know, it's not super. You know, you're not superwoman. You have all your mm. foibles. I mean, I think the first superwoman for me was. Uh, or superhero for me was Mary Poppins, you know, uh, looking at some of these mm. hats. So, <laughs> so. But power is really, power is a healthy word because power is grounding and it comes from within. And it's something you develop from within. And it gives you the confidence to do things with freedom and like you said you're curious you totally are always so open and so curious about everything and what happens is you draw people to you who fill that need you have it's like you're a magnet for that so power also does that it draws the right people to you it and when you exude that power the positive people come to you and and when you exude insecurity or a lack of self-esteem or, or all of the stuff that we suffer from, you draw the wrong people or the wrong men or the wrong, you know, environment. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think the, the longevity of curiosity is how you stay fresh and having a purpose and, un and knowing what that purpose is, is key. For me, understanding my purpose, that my job was to help women feel good about themselves. I wanted to make my mother feel good, so I worked very hard at that. I learned how to make any woman feel good once I figured out how to do that with her. And so I'm pretty good at that. And, and so it's even expanded now and even becoming more important. And so that's my purpose. And I, I'm, I'm comfortable. I like that. Your purpose is clear. I mean, you, your curiosity, your, your purpose is what's giving us the, the pleasure of what you're producing. And I think it doesn't have an age limit. 
that no. you know now your friend passed, but you realize that you really don't have an age limit. It's, it's no, but I, looking at when you look at our society and who are the role models for, um, for women and how difficult it is to find roles for women yeah. after a certain age and looking at what's going on both behind the camera in, in our business and you know the gender disparity in the business, mm -hmm. the pay disparity in the business and looking to and, and to realize that um, we at uh, we at Tribeca have been able to have been seeing this for years and doing it before mm. it was you know the buzzword and everyone was saying you know we're going to be 50 percent women our con our company is 80 percent women um so to to realize that you you know the, reality, your, the realities yeah. and also to create um role models to have you as a role model to look at Ruth Bader Ginsburg mm -hmm. to have these role models that um, didn't exist mm -hmm. for for women, which is part of the reason I I want to do this podcast with women that I think can make these changes and be voices because you're experiencing it. So I decided. People asked me to to talk about aging. I thought, well, you know, I meet a lot of people and they don't know I'm 74. Why do I have to like talk about I'm 74? And then I thought about it and I said, well, you know what? So what the hell? I'm totally cool with being 74, 75, whatever. And maybe that's what my role is. Maybe I am supposed to say, guess what? 74 is like, is young. Not, I, it, it, for me, it's my spirit is certainly whatever I think right. it is. And one of the other reasons I thought a good conversation is what you just touched on in fashion and in film, the images are always no lines, no character, no, no expression of life experience. And I want so much through my example and whoever else I can muster to start to create these images of what experience looks like and make it pleasing for people. It's we've trained ourselves to think that a baby skin, no life experience, innocence is beauty. Well, yes, that's beautiful, but Power is beautiful. A woman who's strong and who is nurturing at the same time and is vital and, and creating something for everyone on the planet is beyond beautiful. But that's also a change, and you're doing it through all the work that you've been doing globally. Um, you're, you have... Um, it's a change in how our society in the U.S., societies around the world, look at look at women and look at um, look at women who are older and are not suddenly oh your grandma go out to mm -hmm. pasture yeah uh, and that's 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 changed mm -hmm. um, and I think we have uh, you know whether it's whether we have. Uh, whether we have started to understand our power as um, Mother Nature intended, mm -hmm. or it's this ferocity of understanding, here's our experience, here's our voice, mm -hmm. and, and letting loose as opposed to, I think when you're, I certainly know for me when I was younger, I didn't want to speak up in a room. I didn't. I didn't speak. I think that, um, <laughs> and and I think the softness of my voice that when I did speak and I could say, you know, whatever right. to somebody, you know, screw off or whatever, they're like, oh, well. They, I mean, it mm -hmm. sounded uh, more profound right. than it probably really was. So, I, know, I think it's. I think it's. I think it's our time. I also feel the real commitment to make sure my daughters and 
the young women that I work with have uh, their sense of, understand their power mm -hmm. and their sense of equality and are heard um, sooner rather than later. Yeah. Well, you know, the, it's very funny because I could hardly speak for years and nobody ever heard me speak either. Hard to believe, but, <laughs> um, but I, I was the same. I was very quiet. One of the, the um, this sort of, the one last bastion of having no politically correct protection is the aging or the women or especially women who are older. Um, you know, the words like anti-aging and anti-wrinkle and all of this negativity that makes people feel bad and is offensive is still so okay that for me, we have to start saying, hey, wait a minute, everybody's gonna get here. We better start now and we better look at what that means. And, 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 and I keep going back to the word power again because when you have power, people don't mess with you, right? Well, the other thing is when you're filling out certain forms and they, right. say, they say, you know, how old are you? And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, there's no more box for me to check <laughs> off. What the hell is this? You know, like, right. you know, what, yeah. you know, as consumers, as audiences, and, what, how they're yeah. measuring. And I think that that too is, yeah. is changing as they see well, the spending for, power yeah. of, the, the, you know, spending power of, uh, of a certain demo and mm -hmm. how suddenly we're, creating things, both uh, fashion, fashion, food, mm -hmm. music, all the products it's you're a doing. It's powerful group. Yeah. It's a really powerful group. And I think even whether it's in film, of having more, unfortunately, because of the system, actresses are put in these boxes that don't allow that process to happen where you can have, see this. And I think more stories, and I'm sure you're going to be sort of subliminally thinking about who's writing these stories or telling these stories about women who were, who were winning and feeling and feeling positive and successful and not hating the aging process and seeing the joy in it. It comes. You have to earn it. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a process you have to earn. And that story has to be told on film to inspire more women. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you're a, a perfect person to sort of figure out how that gets done. But the, the whole anti-aging thing has me so crazy. Writing age down, too. Every time, I, like, I just joined this gym but and, and, and a yoga thing, and in each case you had to. And I wasn't there. I did it on you mm -hmm. know email and filled in the form you know on their website, and and it said age, and I was like, damn, I don't want to put my age because it's gonna look like I can't move, and I can do a split, and I can do this. Like I, they're not gonna know that. Right. Should I lie? And I thought. I'm so pissed off that I have to do this, and I didn't fill it in. I was like, well, I'm not filling it in. Right. You see, I don't want. I don't want to fill this in. I don't want to. Um, you know, I, I think um, the other, the other thing. Let's go back to. Let's go. Let's go to fashion. Let's go to. You know, you walk in to your store downstairs, and you look at all the, you know, designs, and that is for anyone of any age yeah. and I think that we've all I mean just in terms That's of dress yeah. just in terms of dress um, we're not dressing you know, our, I, age. our age but <laughs> I don't know what our age I don't right. know what our right. age is anymore you yeah know, we're um, that's a and, very good point and I and I think that um, you know I think that's that's another part of yeah. feeling your useful mm -hmm. self. Um. It just shows your spirit. I mean, I think uh, I, it's so funny because I'll meet 
women, I mean, I've been doing this for 51 years, right? So look at all the generations mm -hmm. that have been customers at different points in their lives. They come into my life and then they go and they have another right. thing they do in a different way they dress. And it happens with all designers, right, yeah. it's expected. And so I'll hear people say to me, oh, I used to wear your clothes when I was going out and when I was younger, when my body was great. And I like, and I look at them and I think, I feel so bad that not that, that they're not buying my clothes because there are people buying my clothes, but that they think of themselves in a limited way. That that there's a, no, that's not for me anymore. That's for my daughter or whatever. But to but to think, well, I could wear that. That could make me feel good. I could feel good in that color and that style. But it's, it, again, that society, that's what uh, certainly print publishing magazines mm -hmm. have, have done to women. That you, you know, I remember, um, you know, looking in, like, Vogue and it being aspirational, you know. And then right. I kind of realized, okay, even if I could wear those clothes, I couldn't afford For those the, right. clothes. <laughs> now I look at it and like going, who is wearing yeah, those? And, who yeah. would, and why would I want to spend that much, much money? money? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, when you, you have the money, but why would I want to spend that much money on that? Yeah. Um, but uh, but your, your clothes are, are timeless, um, and, and you just feel so rock and roll. Well, well, I mean, I think that it's, thank you, because I, I, I'm happy when I do something and people, I've done something in 1973 and people are still wearing it now and I think, who would have ever thought? And that's, so that's like a really good thing. But to have clothes and, and the purpose, again, of making people feel good is just, you know, when you feel good in something, you're just, I have it, it's covered, I'm it's, good. I, I always feel, and, um, and certainly men don't have this issue mm -hmm. at all, but um, I, I feel that when I, you know, I get up in the morning and it's like, who am I today? Right. <laughs> who, you know, am I going to set and, you know, right. look, you know, with my sneakers and my backpack mm -hmm. or am I, do I have a meeting? Do I have right. to do, you know, press for something? And I kind of feel like when I, put whatever it is yeah. on, I feel a certain way. There was a time a while ago um, where I had to go to a board meeting and I started to get dressed and I put on a suit. And I thought to myself, wait a second, these people want me there because of me. Yeah. And not, I don't need to wear a mm. suit. Mm -hmm. I like wearing suits, but yeah. I, I don't need to do this. And I just remember, I took it off and right. I put on my black dress and I put on my boots right. and said, yeah, this is, what, right. this is who, I, this is who right. I am and feeling good in who I am. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing with going, accompanying, going back to power is as a woman to start to understand who you are, how you, we have so many choices mm -hmm. and to feel that you create your own, your own, trend or your own you know identity, inspired, yeah. identity through through clothes without feeling like it and has how to you be, express yeah. yourself you know it's very interesting you said women really do have this opportunity to have fun when they dress and to tell the story of who they are that day or who they are in a uniform that they wear and men don't so recently actually in the last two years now, um, I decided to photograph men in my clothes. And I don't do a men's collection, mm -hmm. but not in drag. They weren't right. certainly drag, but they were wearing my clothes. And, and, I, and it was, I was inspired to do so by an assistant hairdresser who was on a set who was a New York Dolls fan. Mm -hmm. And I used to do clothes right, for yeah. the dolls. And so... He was like, I, I, I didn't know what was wrong with him. I didn't know he was a New York dancer. He was like, oh, my God, these clothes. These clothes. I was like, what's the matter? And he said, I just love them. And then he tells me, and I said, at the end of the shoot, 
before we close the set, we'll take some pictures of you in the clothes if you want to wear them. So I saw this joy that women have mm -hmm. on his face, and he was in heaven. He was so joyous. So then I thought, I'm going to do my photo shoots and mm -hmm. have guys wear the clothes. The last photo shoot, I had four guys come in and a, a very gender fluid group. Mm -hmm. Very, each one had a different inclination of how they expressed themselves and who they were. And I invited them to choose whatever they liked from the collection, bring their own accessories, mm -hmm. and model in any way they wanted. The joy in the room was I thought, why don't I have a camera here? Why am I not videotaping this? This, the spirit and the energy of seeing their happiness was so uplifting. And I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I, I just watched the way they styled themselves and what they did. And it was so great. And the pictures are so fantastic. Oh. Um, and so. I think the more men can feel this sort of, just like Mick Jagger brought in this, he was the first to describe gender fluid, mm -hmm. really. We didn't know if he was into men or women, right. whatever. He's wearing lipstick and a dress and whatever, and he's dancing around on the stage and swishing, and like, but everybody fell in love with him. It's that kind of thing, that spirit, I think, that is finally going to, to see some happening with men. Well, I think that's also just a huge societal shift, too, in um, a Gen, Gen Z yeah. not, even to, not even wanting to identify as either male or female and feeling that why should that be, why yeah. should you label why should you label me? Um, I think that the more um, same-sex couples that are having children and mm -hmm. um, taking maternity, paternity leaves uh, creates a different yeah. way for our society to um, express uh, family mm -hmm. and uh, express I identity of what uh, a mother or father or, right. or parents are and so it's a real interesting time mm -hmm. and and I think through that as we're um, getting older and bolder mm -hmm. it's um, giving us new voice yeah. too yeah it's all, it's, it's, a, it's an incredible time, don't you think? I mean, it's so exhilarating to, to see. I mean, there's a lot of heavy stuff, but when you see this kind of spirit happening, you know that tomorrow's going to be okay. It is going to be okay. I hope, I hope so. I, I, I think, I, I mean, I, I feel that sitting here by hats, hats. <laughs> um, but you know I, I worry about uh, what's happening in our political system I um, worry that um, you know we all need to vote especially in five states that will determine mm -hmm. an election um, that you know we're all so interconnected globally mm -hmm. it's uh, you know I just um, I know there are a lot of good people out there and um, part of what you do uh, is inspire women to talk, hopefully mm. can follow in your lead and to make sure that we find and use our voices, whether it's um, fashion or movies, um, but also in, in, you know, in, in the body politic. In the future, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a critical, I, I'm, I just feel that the potential for leadership that is inspiring in the way when I was growing up, I would 
tell you, and people in my generation will tell you, that we would watch TV the few hours that it was on. Right. And it would be JFK, Martin Luther King, Gandhi. This is the landing on the moon. Think about that. Think about these were all around at the same time. How positive and uplifting that is. And to have that memory so bold and clear in my mind from my childhood. And to think that there has, that has to happen again. Because these people do exist. They are somewhere. And unless we get that type of energy again, we, we really will always be fearful and always worry. But I, I am very positive in believing because I saw it and I, I saw what that energy can produce in people. It, it, it spreads to everyone that there's a chance for this to happen again. And sometimes the pendulum needs to go in one direction before it goes in another. And it, it, it's, just, it, it's just for me that that inspirational human being is alive today. And there are more than one. And we need to do some kind of energy pull to get those people to come up again and inspire. Well, we have more opportunity to find those people when you look at social media and how, yeah. um, you know, how everyone is connected. Um, I mean, there is the pros and cons, but mostly the pros mm -hmm. of, uh, of, the, of the Twitterverse and how you can create. And um, certainly watching your Instagram, I'm for... <laughs> Forever saying, oh, if Norma is exercising, I better go do a leg <laughs> lift or something because Norma has done that. Um, but it is exciting. You talk about, uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi is going to be 80 years old. I mean, she's, she's a she's, pioneer. She's extraordinary. She's, and she's a, she, I, I look at her and I, I know what she had to go through early in her career. I mean, you can just imagine all of those years and all the work she did to be in that world today at her age, even better. Yeah, extraordinary. I mean, uh, I, I give her so much credit for the pioneering. I mean, her story has got to be written, and yeah. it, it's, it's, it's really a great story. She's amazing. I know. And I think that the women that are, um, you know, there's women who are in their 90s and 100s are, you know, worshipped and mm -hmm. appreciated. However, there are women who are 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, there are women there too that need to be celebrated and need to be present and influential. Um, and I, I think it's so important to, to make that happen now and to start finding them and making, having a voice. And it could be somewhere in there, I believe, for politics, you do need experience. I think a youthful attitude and a youthful spirit is very helpful. But I like knowing that, that there's experience. So if it's a 50-year-old or a 6-year-old or wh however, having gone through all the shit you go through mm -hmm. in life is really helpful when you're strategizing a conversation or doing something like that and maybe we can find this well we you know you you look at other cultures that uh that revere their elders and revere that wisdom mm. in indigenous cultures um and we have never looked to revere our elders and respect our elders the way they do and 
Native American mm. cultures, and Japanese, you know, and, and cultures throughout the world. And that's a, a shift. We're more about um, putting people away mm. and society. Getting just, them out of sight. Get, getting them yeah. out of sight. Um, I think that's um, what's so great about New York. You mm. see people of yeah, all right. ages and everybody. Is in everybody. Your and, right. and, you know, um, you know, spending a lot of time in LA, I don't think you, you know. It's so you, different. It's so different. Um, but it is, it is something that we look at other cultures, mm. how they um, respect their elders. Yeah. They respect those, those wisdom keepers. Mm. And, and we need that. It's not always just, uh, you know, whatever's mm. new, uh, new this instant. We, you know, going back to politics, yes, you want, you want everyone represented, but there is something to having um, uh, somebody understand the, the history, whether they lived it or they read yeah. it or they studied it. Uh, and, are in, and, and being inspiring takes people out of their political definition. So are you a Democrat? Are you a Republican? Are you moderate? Are you independent? Somebody inspirational just draws people. And yeah. that is this, that's that special person. So we don't have a divided country. We don't have these, you know, packs of separated people. We need to start pulling people together. And how do you do it unless somebody is so powerful and their energy just makes you feel like you have to be a part of that? Well, it's also being courageous. I think the one thing that uh, we don't have um, no matter what uh, what political party are people with real courage mm -hmm. and um, you know courage to stand up instead of just blindly going towards a party that we've got uh, you know there's so many things that we need to do in mm -hmm. you know in this country just you know just infrastructure as our cities are getting older. Education. Talk about age, yeah. education. 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 Like if that. our kids are our best natural resource and our future, Everything. then we need to be investing in education that uh, we don't pay our teachers. I mean, you start to go through that. And I think that if, yeah. our, if our education system was stronger, if you're paying your teachers to you know, investing in that. Then but also having a system that goes with the technology we have now where children are seeing things in a different way. We need to educate them, and we need to educate. I think the modern form of slavery is the education we have right now. The system we have keeps people ignorant and poor. We have a, you know, it's, it's another form of slavery. Yes. For particularly in black and brown communities well, that's and our, public you know, it's so whether that's public schools or whether that is um, the criminal injustice system. It goes yeah. right from the school. I, I've worked at, in, in a school in New York from the 80s for a long time and it just closed recently. And there were four metal detectors and Every kid that, and chains on the hallways, and every kid that went to that school was, it was like preparing for jail, preparing yeah. for incarceration, incarceration. I was like, this is just, is horrible. That This is just the worst thing you're imprinting in these kids' brains. And then they would get just an uninspired environment an inspired education. The systems were so antiquated. The, the structure of how to teach and build hope doesn't exist. And that, to me, that's the biggest. And I think climate change is huge and important. But we also have to talk about education as important, because this is the future, climate change, education, that's the future. 
So I just lose it when it comes to, to I think that's my phone. <laughs> I, I, I just absolutely yeah. lose it with, with uh, the fact that we don't have people fighting for taking children who are impoverished or in situations where it's single parent families and giving them the most support to, to rise up out of that and really be the future. And we, we see when that works, mm -hmm. it's incredible. It changes everybody. It's a, it, it's, it's a big load that we have. If you had one sort of dream that you feel you still want to fulfill is I mean, you have many dreams I know, but I mean like one that you think I want to do. This is one thing that I see in my plan. What what is that dream? Um, it's hard to look and see one um, in a global well, sense. Well, you can in a, you, in a you, global you can, sense, in you know, in a, I suppose in the most personal sense, it's that my my girls will continue to do good work and inspire whatever um, sense I've been able to um, provide them with about the world at, at large that mm. they can keep living and changing the world. Um, uh, I suppose that's my, like, again, on a very personal note, um, I, you know, I, I think I, I get, I, I look at what's happened on our watch in, in our country and in the world, and I get really angry about it and it's like okay how do we do something that's going to change the system and i hope i live long enough to help make that change, change. well i think your example for your daughters whatever you have taught them or whatever you do is not as powerful as who you are and what you're doing i mean in the end, um, they're they're only gonna see what how who you are and what well, you do for so many people well, every day. But at the end of the day, for me, you can say, "Oh, I'm a role model to this or that." At the end of the day, for me, there's only two people I'm a role model for that I have an audience of two. Right and. Um, I can, <laughs> they can like make me crazy yeah. sometimes, but that's um, that becomes what is the most most important mm. for me. And and the thing is, kids really do know when they are loved. They do know that, and like whatever your frustration is, or whatever, however proud you are. The, the expression of love through that is so meaningful for kids. And, you know, we just finished talking about the kids in public schools who may not have anyone who's able to even give them the time for that. And that, you know, it's such a precious thing to feel love from, from a parent. That, that's the strength they'll have in what they do the rest of their lives. And hopefully movies can teach them to and telling stories, mm. movies on whatever that platform will be can tell them stories and give them a sense of hope. And um, that is what, you know, very specifically with uh, when they see us, the stories about the mm. exonerated five was really about showing that there is, is hope yeah. and that we can make some real change. Yeah, I, I mean, think about how that sort of, it's, it was almost like a sigh of relief for so many people to, to see that there is a chance for things to change, and that's obviously what film can do, the power of film. 
I think we're all lucky to have some energy that we can contribute to. And I love, first of all, you're just the coolest. Oh, and God, I'm so happy you. that we've done this. But I just can't wait to see all the things you'll be doing. And hopefully we can talk again about this aging with power and how we can get messaging out about it. I'm committed to just saying, okay, I'm 74 and you don't have to, like, it's not all over. Um, so, and, and you're such a great sort of visionary in this world and I'm sure you'll come up with something, no pressure. Oh God, Norma, <laughs> oh God, thank you, it's an honor.